Hello everyone again. So I'm going to continue with lecture three. And um, before doing that, so let's make a quick reminder of what we did yesterday, lectures one and two. So yesterday we checked that uh, the class of uh, self-similar processes is that of scaling limits. Okay? Meaning that every process that is self-similar can be obtained as a scaling limit of a sequence of stochastic processes. Okay? And uh, that the scaling is always uh, of regular variation. Okay? And also, we state uh, an important theorem that we are going to prove today, which is uh, Lampertis' theorem, or Lampertis' representation, which uh, says that every positive so positive in the mean in the sense that it only takes uh, positive values positive self similar markov processes markov process can be seen as the exponential of a Levy process time change. Okay? And um, I'm going to make that uh, more precise. Okay? So I wanna, I'm going to explain uh, explicit this transformation. I'm going to prove the theorem. But uh, to do that, let me remind a couple of uh, definitions just to make sure we are all speaking about the same thing. So remember, self-similar Markov processes are self-similar Markov processes are self-similar and strongly Markovian processes, okay? And what do I mean by strongly Markovian? We will say that uh, process, that a process xt for t positive, okay? Which is uh, rd valued. Okay, uh, define it on any space omega f with a filtration. By a filtration, I mean an increasing family of uh, sigma algebras, okay, and a family of probabilities px for x in Rd, okay. Um, has a strong Markov property okay. if for every stopping time filtration ft that means that the event t is more or equal than t is in ft for all t positive okay 
-hmm. We have that the law of the process xt plus t for t positive. Um, conditionally on ft cap intersection t being finite. Okay, so this is the filtration up to the random time t, capital T. Uh, it has the same law. as xt for t positive, okay, starting from the random position xt, okay, so the position of the process at time capital T, okay. Just uh, should I remind what ft is? ft is a family of sets in F such that the event A intersection T is more equal than T is in Ft for all T positive. I mean, this is just uh, something technical, but just, just to have uh, the, the right notation, okay? And to check this, it is in fact to verify that uh, for every x in Rd and f from Rd into R, uh, let's say, measurable and bounded we have that the expected value starting from little x of the process at time xt plus s, given what has happened up to time capital T, is just equal to the expected value taken at the position C of f of x s when C takes the value xt, okay? And this uh, also for every s positive, okay? In particular, uh, x is a time homogeneous. Markov process. Okay. So I hope everybody is uh, familiar with this definition. But if not, uh, we can just uh, take it as uh, granted. And this will be very useful later. Okay. So all our processes are uh, time homogeneous. They have uh, this a strong Markov property, okay? So that the property of the present and the past are independent conditionally. The, sorry, the past and the future are, in, are independent conditionally, condi conditionally on the present, even if the present happens at a random time, okay? So this time is the time of the present, where we observe the process and we observe the future and the past, and these two events are independent, okay? Uh, we will also, just for technical reasons, we assume also that X has right continuous in T. 
And left limited parts, or in the French notation, we had cat lag parts, okay, and also that X is what is called quasi left continuous meaning that if Tn is a sequence of stopping times drawing to T as n goes to infinity then Xtn will converge almost surely as n goes to infinity to xt on the event where t is finite. Okay? It's just uh, meaning essentially that x, even though it has uh, right continuous and left limited paths, if you fix a time t, okay, essentially you will see something that is uh, a, a bit of the path that is continuous, okay? This is uh, something technical that is also needed. Okay, uh, the strong Markov property for Levy processes can be written in the following way. Okay. This, this condition that I wrote here, all the conditions are conditions that are satisfied for Levy processes. Okay. But uh, a way to write the, the, the Markov property, the strong Markov property for Levy processes is that if psi is a Levy process with respect to a filtration to in, an, in an space omega f Ft and some probability p. Okay. And t is an stopping time in this filtration. Okay. Then psi t plus s minus psi t. So the increment at time uh, from uh, capital T to capital T plus s is independent of what has happened in the process up to time t. And this holds for every s positive, OK, on the event where t is finite. Okay. So this is just saying that the property of independent and stationary increments of the Levy process is preserved when we take random times. Okay. And there is something else. And has the same law. as psi s for s positive. Okay. This is just another way to define Levy processes, if you, if you recall that. So for Levy processes, a way to define Levy processes is that this holds for a fixed time, for any fixed time t. Okay. And the strong Markov property for Levy processes means that we can change that fixed time, fixed time t by a random time, by any random time that uh, is a stopping time. Okay? Yes. And 
Yeah, yeah, so, yeah, on that event, yeah. Mm-hmm. Yes. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so you, you, you take the expected value of an event of this and the expected value of an event of this, indicator t is finite, and you prove that that is equal to the expected value of this indicator t is finite, times the expected value of this, sorry, the expected value of this, the, of that event defined in terms of this. Um, meaning that the expected value of any psi t plus s minus psi t for s positive, this is any test function, and Any uh, yeah, test function g of psi u for u is more or equal than t. This is equal to the expected value of f of psi s for s positive times the expected value of g of psi u for u is more than capital T indicator t is finite for every f, g, uh, measurable functionals. Okay. That's the meaning of this uh, notion. OK. For those of you who are not familiar with uh, random times or stopping times, just uh, think that this is allowing you to treat random times as fixed times. Okay? It's a bit an abuse of notation, but uh, let's uh, think of that. Okay? And why this is important? Because in the Lamperti transformation, what or, or the Lamperti representation we're observing. Levy processes, uh, Levy processes at random times. Okay, so I need this kind of formality. Okay. Well. Uh, okay, so I'm gonna give uh, some details of the proof of the Lamperti representation. Okay. But before I want to know if uh, there is a question or if there is any question about this, is it okay? So, what did uh, Lamperti representation say? Okay. It tells us that if psi is a killed Levy process, Taking values in R union minus infinity, minus infinity being in an absorbing time, okay? Then the process xt x defined as x times exponential psi tau t x in minus alpha when t is smaller than x to the alpha, the integral from zero to infinity, exponential alpha psi s ds, and being equal to zero when t is above than x to the alpha zero infinity, exponential alpha psi s 
this and this holding for all t positive and x positive, then x is a 1 over alpha positive self-similar Markov process. Uh, killed at zero. Zero. And with a lifetime lifetime T zero that has the same law as this random variable that is here. This is for each alpha in R. Okay. So verifying this uh, claim is uh, rather easy in the following sense. So you can, from this from this construction, you can easily check. that x so define okay has a scaling property okay so Yes, okay. Just uh, I write one over alpha when alpha is different from zero, but uh, yeah, when uh, for alpha in R, so yes, let's say alpha different from zero, okay? But if alpha is equal to zero, the definition is still right, just the notation is not correct, okay? So, but the construction is valid if alpha is equal to zero. Yeah? It's just the exponential of the levy, in fact. Because if you take alpha equal to zero, this is just, uh, this is one. Okay, so there is no, there is no uh, time change other than x to the minus alpha. Yeah? Mm -hmm. So, <clears throat> um, so we can just check that it has uh, the scaling property, so Every, for any C is strictly positive, the process xt c times, uh, sorry, x times x c to the minus alpha c, okay, when t is bigger or equal than zero, is equal to c times x the exponential psi in the time t times x times c to the minus alpha for t positive, okay? But this, by construction, is just x t c times x for, c, for t positive, okay? So, These processes that we build here has the scaling property. Okay. Well, in fact, okay, here I should be more caref careful 
I should be writing t is smaller or equal than uh, c to the alpha times t zero, the first heating time of zero. Same here. I'm here. Okay. But um, it doesn't change anything because after when I put zero, it's equal to zero everywhere. Okay. Okay, so it has a scaling property. Now we need to check it has a strong Markov property. But I that I will not do it. For that, I'm, I'm going to quote uh, a result that is due to Volkonsky that um, says the following. This uh, result, you can read it in, in, the, in the book of uh, Karatsas and the uh, Shrif. Okay. The term reads as follows. Take a t to be defined as the integral from zero to t of a function v of y u du, okay, with um, with v a measurable function and positive such that the integral is finite, okay? Um, yeah. For all t, okay. positive, mm -hmm. and why a strong Markov process okay. and define CT to be the inverse of this uh, additive functional. is for every t positive. Okay. Then the process y tilde defined by time change Uh, 
as y tilde of t is equal to y at ct if ct is finite and as a decimetry state if for y tilde if ct is infinite okay so remember ct is infinite when the infimum when the when the set is uh, empty okay then this process for t positive has a strong markov property this process has the strong Markov property with respect to the filtration F tilde of CT okay so the fil for each CT CT is a stopping time okay So you, you take CT, where is uh, that? Okay. Uh, here it is. There. Okay, so you replace capital T by CT for each uh, filtration. Okay, and this is the new fi a new filtration for this new process, and this process will have the Markov property with respect to that guy. Okay. And... Uh, what else? We also have that um, okay I'm not I'm not being totally accurate, but so Y has a strong mark of property with respect to the filtration, to a filtration FT for T positive. Okay? That filtration, I transform it, I time change it with respect to C. And I get a new process that has still the, the strong Markov property. Okay, so this is just telling us that uh, that the strong Markov property is preserved under time changes. Okay, and there are many other nice uh, properties, uh, as for instance, this guy is adapted with respect to this guy. Stopping times with respect to this guy become stopping times with respect to this guy, and so on. Okay. But uh, we don't need to use that at the moment. But we need to know that this guy is still a Markov process. Okay? So if we take that for granted, then this guy that we just uh, built, where is it? Here. Okay? It has a Markov property, the strong Markov property, in fact, and it has a scaling property. So we can... Uh, we can we can be calm, relax. This process is a positive cell similar Markov process. Okay. Is there any question about that? Yeah. Oh, uh, F F C T. This is uh, yeah. F tilde of T is F C T. Thank you. Okay, so now let me prove that if we start with a self-similar process, then we find a Levy process by this transformation. Okay. And I want to do that uh, with some details because it helps to get acquainted with this, um, with this notation and with this formality. So 
given a positive self-similar Markov process X that is killed at uh, zero, so the first time it hits zero, then the process psi defined by psi t which is given by the log of x of bt over x0 for t is smaller than the integral from 0 to t0 of xs to the minus alpha ds. So remember t0 is the first hitting time of 0 for x and as minus infinity if t is bigger or equal than the integral from 0 to t0 of xs to the minus alpha ds. Okay? This process for t positive is a Levy process. that takes values in R union minus infinity with a lifetime zeta, which has the same law as the integral from zero to t zero of xs to the minus alpha ds and follows an exponential distribution of parameter q for q big, bigger or equal than zero. Okay? And that yesterday I used the notation exponential q. Um, and also here the definition psi does not depend on uh, x here. Okay. And we also saw three properties, C1 to C3 hold. Okay, so re remember is that either the process never hits zero or it hits zero in a finite time and it does it continuously or it hits zero in a finite time and it does it by a jump. Okay? And that is related to the behavior of psi. Okay? Okay. Mm. okay. So If I apply the Volkonsky theorem to this process, yes? B, 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 B. I didn't. Thank you. Bt is the inverse of the integral from 0 to s of x u to the minus alpha du being bigger than t for all t positive, okay, and as, a, as before, the infimum of the empty set is plus infinity. Okay, thank, you. thank you. Okay. Okay, so if I define this process like that, and I apply a Volkonsky theorem, I immediately have that this process uh, has a strong Markov property, okay, and that it takes values in this set, okay. But uh, I still need to check that it has a property of independent and stationary increments, okay. And there is where we need a little bit more of work, but it's not it's not too much. But before doing that, let me check uh, the conditions uh, C1 and C2, to C3, okay? 
So C1 tell us, well, in fact, mm, yeah, OK, part of it. So let me check that Px of t0 uh, is finite, is equal. So let me check this. So claim is that Px of t0 is equal to 1 for all x positive, or is equal to 0 for all x positive, OK? 2 is that Px of t0 is finite, and x t0 from the left is equal to 0. Is the same, is equal to 1 for all x positive or is 0 for all x positive. And the third possibility is that px of t0 is finite and x t0 from the left is bigger than 0. This is again equal to 1 for all x positive or 0 for all x positive. So let's um, make the proof. Proof. Mm -hmm. So take x x be a positive self similar Markov process issued from little x, OK? And for c positive, take x tilde of x to be the process c times x tilde t c to the minus alpha, starting from x divided by c, OK? For t positive, OK? So x tilde has the same law as x just by the scaling property. Okay. And what about the first heating time of zero for x tilde? The same heating, this, the, the first heating time of zero for x tilde should have the same law as x to the, the as c to the alpha, c to the alpha t zero. Okay. Is that uh, clear? Because this is the first time. Where c times uh, this is uh, this is from x c. Okay. Sorry, this is starting from x. This guy is starting from x, and this is for the first hitting time of zero of the process starting from x divided by c. So it's the same. If you do that, this is just equal to c to the alpha, the infimum of t positive, where x, x divided by c is equal to 0 for t. OK? This is c alpha t0. OK?
from this, from this property, okay, so we check that if the product starting from x is finite, that happens if the starting, uh, if the product starting from x divided by c is finite, okay, and vice versa. So this probability that is here does not depend on x, okay. So T0 being finite does not depend on the starting point. Okay? So let's call P the probability starting from any point x for t0 being finite. Is that okay? Is there any question about this identity here? No? So this is a constant, this is a function that is constant on x because of, of the way of this uh, argument that is here. Yeah? Okay. I must have uh, said that I put the depends on the starting point here, but then I remove it because it, does, it doesn't really depend in some places. Okay. Okay, so I call P the probability starting from uh, some little x for T0 being finite. Okay. This doesn't depend on x because this is a, a constant. Okay. Then by the Markov property we have that the probability starting from x and t being is more than t0 and b, t0 being finite is just, if I condition on what has happened, happened up to time t, I apply the Markov property, I get that this is equal to the expected value of the probability starting from xt, to the position where I am at time t, of t0 being finite, and here I still have the event t is smaller than t0, okay? But again, this is a constant, so this is equal to p times the probability starting from x for t being smaller than t0, okay? Notice that this function that is here is a function of t and of x, okay? It will depend on x because there will be an x to the alpha appearing somewhere, okay? So this function is, a, is not a constant of x. So if we use that, we have that p, which is the probability starting from x for t0 being finite. This is equal to the probability starting from x for t0 being smaller or equal than t, plus p times the probability starting from x for t being smaller than t0. Okay? I just apply this uh, identity here. But this is equal to Px 
T zero is more or equal than T plus P times Y minus one minus PX T zero is more or equal than T. Okay, and so we get that P is equal to one minus P times uh, PX for T zero is more or equal than T times uh, plus P. Okay. So we can get rid of this two guys, and so we get that zero is equal to one minus p times px of t zero is more or equal than t, okay? And when we make t go to infinity, this goes to one minus p px of c, uh, t zero being finite, okay? So p times one minus p should be equal to zero. Okay? So this is proving this. Yeah? It's just using this, which is a consequence of the Markov property. Then we split the event t0 being finite as t0 being smaller than t or bigger than t. Okay. Yeah. And then we use that this can be written. Oh. Uh, yes. No, that's right. That was correct. That was correct. That was correct. Okay. Okay, so this P should be equal to one or to zero. Okay, it's a zero one law. Okay. Let me now prove the second. So again. Uh, by a similar argument, we have that the function px uh, for t0 being finite and x t0 being equal to 0 is a constant for all x positive. Just do the same. Do the same as in here. Define this process x tilde. Okay. And because we are, we are determining the event where x t0 minus is equal to 0, we will see that this doesn't depend on x. Okay. Just by doing the same trick of writing x tilde of x in this form. Okay. Yeah. Should I write it? I mean, this is just px of t0 tilde being finite and x tilde t0 tilde minus being equal to 0, which is equal to the probability starting from xc, from c, uh, c alpha t0 being finite and c x t0 being equal to 0. Okay, just by doing the same trick. Okay, if I do exactly the same trick, I get rid of uh, the dependence. Of x. Okay, so it is a constant. So let's call ky minus to be the first time where xt 
is smaller than y. Okay? I will take ky minus to be equal to t0 if uh, the, the, the set where xt is smaller than y is equal to the empty set. Okay? So, we have that P is equal to the probability starting from X for T0 being finite and XT0 minus being equal to 0. Okay. So, if we are below, if, uh, if we hit 0, then we are below any level Y. Okay. So, this is equal to the expected value starting from X for uh, the indicator ky minus being smaller than t0, being finite, and uh, xt indicator xt0 minus being equal to 0. But we apply the Markov property at the time ky, okay? So this is equal to the expected value starting from x, indicator uh, ky minus is finite, and then the probability starting at x ky minus of t0 being finite and x t0 minus being 0. Okay? This is not very. Let me write it again. So this is. The expected value indicator ky minus is smaller than t0, and the expected value or the probability is starting at x ky minus of t0 being finite and x t0 minus being equal to 0. But this is just a Markov property, the strong Markov property at the random time ky minus, okay? This is a constant, again, and so we just get that there, this is equal to p times the probability of this event, starting from x. So p equals to t to p times the probability of ky minus being smaller than t0, OK? And this happens for all y uh, smaller than the starting point. So here we have that either p is equal to 0, okay, or p is bigger than 0. This is one of the things we wanted to prove. Or if it is bigger than 0, then 1 should be equal to px ky minus is smaller than t0 for all y is smaller than x. Okay? So the probability that we hit a level below y before uh, hitting 0 is equal to 1. Okay? So thus x goes below any level y, okay? 
month um, with probability one. Okay. And uh, um, this ky minus okay, is smaller equal than t0, but in fact, ky minus will grow to t0, okay, because we are going below any level y, so eventually we will hit, we'll hit zero. So we are getting closer and closer to zero, okay. And by the quasi-left continuity, and here is where it is important, we have that x k y minus will converge to x t0 minus. Okay? But all these events are of probability one. Okay? So this event is of probability one. Okay? So P is equal to one. Okay. See, if it is strictly positive, then it is strictly is equal to one. Okay. So this proves the second claim, and we are left to prove uh, the third claim. Yeah, but it's uh, not that's it. Because with the other two guys, by this, by the scaling property, okay, by the scaling property we have that this doesn't depend on x, okay, and because the complement of this is this event, if this is bigger than, if it, this is one, then this is zero, okay. So that uh, finishes the proof of this term of this uh, part. Let me now write the proof of the of the of the independence of the increments. Where is it? Is there, is there any question about this? Is it okay? Okay, now I can delete this then. Okay, so now we need to verify that that for any T S positive um, on the event. where t plus s is smaller than the lifetime. So c is the lifetime of psi, OK? Um, the process psi t plus s, as we define it, minus psi t, is independent on 
of f t, okay, where f t is remember the filtration. So let's say g of b t, where g is the filtration. of x, okay? So it's just what has happened on x up to time bt, okay? Okay. So bt is just the inverse of the, so remember bt is the inverse of the integral from zero to s, x u to the minus alpha du bigger than t. Okay, so <clears throat> this BT has the following property. Okay, so we want, to, we want to prove this fact. Okay, so to do that, observe that BT plus S is equal to BT plus the Vimon. So to be above level T plus S, I should be first above Level, level t, and then pass above, above uh, the remaining uh, space, okay? So plus the infimum for u, for r positive of the integral from zero to r of x u plus b t du bigger than s, okay? What did I do that there? I wrote the integral from zero to s as the integral from zero to bt and from bt to s, okay? So here to do that, to get that, I wrote bt plus s to be the infimum of s positive from zero to bt uh, from u x uh, l minus alpha dl plus bt plus u x l to the minus alpha dl bigger than t plus s. Okay, but this guy that we have here is just t, okay? And then here I make a change of variables, uh, r equal to l plus bt, okay? And by doing that, I get this identity that is here. Okay? So I will get, if I do that, I get okay. and then I, I make a change of variables, b equal to u plus bt here and then I get this bt here, okay? Just to make this uh, a bit clearer, okay? Okay, but this guy that we have here is just bt plus bs uh, for the path starting at the position bt. So this is just the shift operator. So just, this is just telling me, observe the path of x uh -huh, from bt. Okay. And also, okay. 
So just to determine if I know what has happened up to time bt, I know this random variable, OK? And I need to observe the remaining of the path of x, OK? But the remaining of the path of x from the bt okay, is, again, a copy of x, okay, but starting at the position that I reach at time bt. It's just a Markov property, OK? So by the strong Markov property, by the strong Markov property, at bt, we have that the law of the process x at bt plus u for u positive, given what has happened up to time bt, okay, is equal to that of this process starting from this point x at bt, which is the same as that of x uh, u times c to the minus alpha times c for u positive with c equal to bt, x bt, sorry. Remember that the starting from uh, a position little x is the same as multiplying the process by little x or by little c, OK? And time changing by c to the minus half. Okay, so recall that x starting from little x has the same law as x times x to the minus alpha point, OK? Starting from little x is just uh, changing the scale of the space, OK? But this guy that is here, tilde, x tilde is independent of x bt, OK? In fact, we can take it as a process starting from 1, OK? So it, does, it doesn't depend on the starting point. The dependence on the starting point of this process is via the time change. Is that, is that, uh, that correct? This is one of the most important points, I will say, of uh, today. Is everyone, is everyone OK with this? It's just applying the Markov property. So when I apply the Markov property, I observe the same process, but starting at the position xbt. Starting at xbt because of the self-similarity is just multiplying by the starting point a process that starts from 1, yes? But doing a time change, yes? OK. So take H T, which is uh, F T, which is G B T measurable. And positive. Okay. I want to prove that the expected value of this ht times the exponential of i lambda psi t plus s minus psi t on the event when t plus s is smaller than c. Okay. This is equal 
to the expected value of ht in the event when t is smaller than c times the expected value of exponential i lambda psi um, s indicator s is smaller than c. As I said before, this is just like proving the independence of the station of the increments and the stationarity of the of the process i. Okay, it's what I wrote just at the very beginning of the lecture. Okay, if I can prove that, then everything will be done. This is starting in any case from one. Okay. Mm -mm. I take three or four more minutes to finish this. So, just by construction of this guy, this is equal to the expected value of ht of bx at time bt plus s of x bt to the power i lambda, the indicator t plus s is smaller than the lifetime. Okay, so if t plus s is smaller than the lifetime, this bt plus s is well defined, is finite. Okay? So I condition with respect to the filtration up to time bt. So this guy go, goes out of the expected value. So we have this is conditional, conditional on f of on gbt on gbt okay because this ht is measurable with respect to this guy okay then by by this okay this bt plus s is coming from the what is seen up to time t and then what is seen in the future, okay, and this is also what is uh, appearing in the future. So, this by the by the Markov property is H T indicator T is smaller than C, and then the expected value is starting from X B T of X B S over X zero to the I. Lambda indicator S is smaller than C. Yeah. So remember, X time change has a strong Markov property. Okay. Um, yeah, x time change has a strong Markov property. Okay, so when I apply the Markov, pro when I condition with respect to the past, I get a copy of the pro of the original process. Okay, in the remaining time, which is s. Okay, it's just the Markov property. This equality is due to the Markov property. And this. So this is equal to the expected value of ht indicator t is finite, and then the expected value of xbt of exponential i lambda psi s indicator s 
is smaller than C. Okay. But how is the dependence on this uh, point? There is no, there is in fact no dependence in the definition of psi. There is no dependence on this guy. Okay, psi does not depend on x here. Okay, I will I will prove that this is just equal to h t indicator t is smaller than c. And this is what we wanted to prove. OK. Maybe I can leave this as an exercise or I can prove it, but it's just, again, introducing x uh, tilde x as c times x c to the minus alpha uh, t, t uh, x divided by c. Try, try to do this as an exercise for tomorrow, and we discuss this tomorrow. But it's really uh, not difficult so once, once we introduce again this kind of trick. Okay. So let's make a break uh, for the moment, and then we continue after the break. But you can ask questions if you have questions now.